Aloha YouTube, this is that guy with the eye patch coming at you again. Time for the inaugural edition of Ask That Guy with the Eye Patch, where I'm going to read some of the questions my viewers have sent in to me and provide them with some good answers. Okay, first question is from Tom in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Tom writes, Dear that Guy with the Eye Patch, I have to know, what happened to your eye? That's an excellent question, Tom. Good job. Moving right along, our next question is from Jim, J, J, James in Detroit, Michigan. James writes, Dear that guy with the eye patch, I am interested in embarking on a life of crime. I was wondering, what is the best way to hold up a convenience store or liquor store? Sincerely, your fan, J, 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 James. Well, James, my advice to you and I'm not advocating robbery of any sort, but if you really want to know the best way to do this, I will tell you. The first thing you're going to need is a firearm, and you need it to preferably be something cheap. Cheap doesn't always mean bad. I suggest a high point 9mm. I have one that's great. Now, I'm going to digress for a little bit. A lot of people give the high point a lot of shit, but I have one. I probably put 2,000 rounds through it, and it's only jammed on me one time, and that was actually because... Of some bad ammunition I put in it so anyway James go to your local gun store and if you can pass the criminal background check and if you're just starting on life of crime I assume you, you can buy the high point nine millimeter now this will run you about 165 to 220 dollars and if you can't afford that then get it get a Jimenez you know just be prepared for it to blow up in your hand get that which will run you about 150 to 175 now, when you get that, I also want you to get a good box. It doesn't have to be great. It doesn't have to be, you know, the plus P ammunition, though that would certainly help if you can afford it. Uh, but get brass ammunition, okay? Then I want you to load the magazine to capacity. That means fill it up all the way. If you need to know how to load a magazine, there's several tutorials on YouTube. Anyway, when you've done that, I want you to insert the magazine all the way and rack the slide. This will put a round in the chamber. Now that you have a round in the chamber, I want you to sit in a chair and get comfortable. Get very, very comfortable. Get relaxed and start thinking about what you're planning to do. Then I want you to take that high point, 9mm, and I want you to put the barrel, the end of the barrel, under your chin. Okay? Put it under your chin as close to your trachea as you can possibly get it. Now the next part, and this is important, James, okay, this is very important. I want you to pull the trigger as many times as you can before you die. Because you need to die, you lowlife thief motherfucker. Our next question comes from Anthony B. in San Francisco, California. Anthony writes, Dear that guy with the eye patch, as a liberal progressive... Next! Christopher in Macon, Georgia writes, Dear that guy with the eye patch, I've really enjoyed your last two videos. I wanted to ask you what you think would be the best firearm to start out with for someone who is 18 and has shot before but is not proficient. Well, Christopher, excellent question. My personal recommendation for that is going to be a Ruger 1022. That will be a good starter gun. And plus, it is an average gun nonetheless, it being a 22. do not discount the 22 in a home defense situation. No, it does not have the stopping power of a 45 ACP or an AR-15 or an AK, anything of the AK family with the 7.62 by 39 round. But I don't think anybody's really going to sit there and walk through 22 rounds being put into them. Now if they're hyped up they're going to it's going to take a lot of rounds to put them down but don't discount the 22 just because of some things you might have heard it's also a very fun gun to shoot and it would be cheap and easy to get the ammunition for it if these resellers would quit doing their bullshit and what i mean by that is these people who go and they're at walmart and academy sports and dick sporting goods and all these places where you can buy ammunition they're there at the butt crack of dawn buying up ammunition and then they put it on gun broker for three times the price of it as normal 
these people, I would actually like to have you do the same thing I told James in one of the last questions. You people do this too. Next question comes from Alex in Austin, Texas. Alex writes, Dear that guy with the eye patch, why do they sterilize a lethal injection needle? Well, Alex, the answer is simple. It's because your mother should have swallowed. Our last question of the day comes from JT in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. JT writes, Dear that guy with the eye patch, I'm looking to get into prepping. I have been watching a lot of videos about SHTF and WROL. What would be your advice to someone just getting into prepping? Also, I should mention that I work for minimum wage and don't have a lot of money. Excellent question, JT. Now, this brings up a good point. A lot of people think prepping is only for the well-off or rich or semi-wealthy or anything like that. It's really not. It doesn't have to be. It's as expensive as you want to make it. Now, if you want to drop a thousand dollars on a 14 week supply of freeze-dried food that's your call but you can go to the supermarket and pick up cans of Vianney sausages and beanie weenies for roughly 50 cents a can and you can have those put back for a rainy day the problem a lot of people have with starting to prep is they prep for the worst possible scenario first that's not what you need to do. You need to prep for the most likely scenario. Say you live in Oklahoma, you need to be prepared for a tornado wiping out the power station or whatever so that you're without lights for a few days. Water is very easy to store. What you do is, you know, when you buy a Coke, whatever your variety of Coke is, whether it be Coke, Diet Coke, or any of that, and you drink it all, you fill the water bottle back up with water. Now, if you're already drinking store-bought water, well, then I guess fill it back up with tap water because if the situation comes, you'd rather have tap water than no water. This is inexpensive. Now, you need to rotate that out about every six months. Another thing you're going to need to prep is going to be food. These are your main two things. You need food and you need water. I lost my train of thought. Anyway, food and water. Like I said, go to the grocery store and get you some 50 cent cans of beanie weenies and buy any sausages. And store those up for a rainy day. Now, you don't have to have the latest AR-15 and all the varieties of attachments they have on these things. I don't know. With the dragon dildo on the back and all this stuff you don't have to have that you, you really don't have to have a firearm at all to prep now if it, shit does hit the fan and you're without a firearm but you've got a lot of food saved up you're probably gonna lose it but start small this is the best advice I can give to a new prepper start small start with only what you can afford you don't have to be prepared for the world ending next week odds are if it happens it's gonna be a slow burn it's not gonna hit all at once Hopefully it doesn't hit at all, but we never know. So just start small, get you some extra bags of beans and rice, and yes, I don't like beans or rice either. And put those up, rotate your food out every every little bit. It depends on how you like to do it. Some people like to do it every three months, some people like to do it every six. I wouldn't call either one bad. The next thing I could give you advice on is to learn skills in your free time. Now, you said you work for minimum wage, so I doubt you're working all the time. I could be wrong. In your off time, get online and learn how to do things that will help in a shit hit the fan scenario. An electrician is going to be needed. Yes. But you can't really learn how to be an electrician from the internet in your spare time. What you can learn to do is filter water. You can also learn to fish. Fishermen and anglers of all sort are going to be in high demand if shit hits the fan and society's collapsed. I know if if it does, and in my little community that I'm going to have, I want to have about 30 people, and five a day are going to be out fishing. 
Now this this is to provide food and meat. Fishing is not that expensive to get into. Real simple. Go to your local big box store, buy you a $10 rod and reel, whatever kind you prefer to use. If you don't want to use that, get a cane pole, which are usually about $4. But anyway, when you get that, you're going to need some hooks that'll run you about $1.50 to $2, depending on what kind of hooks you get. Then go to the frozen meat section, pick you up a thing of chicken livers. You're set to fish. It's not rocket science. Now, it does take some time to get used to it. I'll put a link in the description to Informative Fisherman's channel who has some great videos on getting started in fishing, especially if you've never done it before. But learn to fish, learn to do something constructive, even if it's basic carpentry. And then you'll be a lot more prepared than other people. This is that guy with the eye patch. That I'm going to wrap this edition of Ask That Guy with the Eye Patch up. I'd like to thank everyone for their questions, except for a few of you. And until next time, y'all have a good one.